three, scene two. Um, we're at the palace. Is Banquo gone from court? Oops. Returns again tonight. Say to the king I would attend his leisure for a few words. Madam, I will. So um, this is Lady Macbeth now all on her own, she says. Nots had, all spent, where our desire is got without content. Tis safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. Okay, so here she's acknowledging where our, des where our desire is got without, oh, why is that happening? Got without content. Um, their desire was obviously to become king and queen, which has happened, but is got without content. So she recognizes that Macbeth isn't content with that. Um, he's not happy just to be king. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We talked a lot about this in class. This is a very famous saying. People don't often know that it comes from Macbeth, but she means what's done is done. We can't go back. We, you know, we can't change the, the past. It's over. It's time to move on. Um, Macbeth doesn't feel that way. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. So this whole thing has just started. We've made progress, scorched the snake, like, you know, we've hit the snake, but it's not dead yet. Like, we have more to do. He knows in his mind that he still needs to kill Banquo and Fleance at least. Um, remember that Lady Macbeth doesn't know that. She'll clothe and be herself whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. But let the frame of things disjoint. Both the worlds suffer, ere we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead, whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace, than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst, nor steel, nor poison, malice, domestic, foreign, levy, nothing can touch him further. Come on, gentle, my lord. Sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. So shall I, love, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence, both with eye and tongue unsafe the while that we must lave our honors in these flattering streams and make our faces visards to our hearts disguising what they are all right so lady macbeth wants macbeth to um get ready for this party and you know look happier than he is um and he reiterates that by saying that we have to make our faces visards to our hearts disguising what they are so masks so this should absolutely remind you of Lady Macbeth before the last party saying, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. This is just another example of appearance versus reality. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowst that Banquo and his fleance lives. So his mind is full of scorpions, so there's a lot going on in his mind um, because Banquo and fleance are still alive. In nature's copies not etern. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jocund. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, ere to black Hecate's summons, the shard-born beetle with his drowsy hums hath rung night's yawning peal, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. Be innocent Oops. of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Lady Macbeth doesn't know what's happening, and um, he says, Macbeth says, be innocent of the knowledge, so I'm not going to tell you, darling or honey, you know, a term of endearment, till thou applaud the deed. So he's looking for the praise from Lady Macbeth. Last time around, Lady Macbeth made the plan, and Macbeth just followed through, and now he wants to show her that he's capable of doing the same. Come, ceiling night. Scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. 
Good things of day begin to droop and drowse, While night's black agents to their praise do rouse. Thou marvellous at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So prithee, go with me. So something we talked a lot about in class is that especially here, Macbeth, starts to sound like the witches. So intentionally, Shakespeare has Macbeth's speech start to mimic the witches, so like with all the rhyming. Um, there's a lot of dark imagery here, so he's trying to let us know that Macbeth is becoming more like the witches. He's changing. He's becoming more evil. So if the witches represent evil, so now does he. Um, and that's it for scene two.